I have a little card here, the serenity prayer, and I love it. And I want us to look at it in the form of leadership. What does that look like as a leader? And I keep these everywhere. I have them literally everywhere. And I know, you know, we look at it for addiction or AA or something like that, but it's more than that. It says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I love that. And whether it's God, a higher power, universe, whatever it may be for you, whatever deity you may have, anything that's maybe you're an atheist or an agnostic and it's it's the universe or, or just your moral ideas, whatever that may be. It says, God grant me the serenity, that peace, the ability to be able to accept the things that you cannot change. As a leader, there are going to be things that you don't need to get involved in. Why do you need to champion that? You know that's going to lead down a road if you look at risk you know that's going to lead down a road that's not going to be beneficial to you your team or anyone in your circle of those that you serve maybe it's something that you're deciding to do and it's going to go against your family you have to understand and accept the fact that there are some things as a leader that you should not do. There are some things as a leader that you not only should not do, but should accept that you should not do them. Stop fighting that desire to do the unattainable. We always think as leaders, and I'm using the word always, kind of in, you know, being sarcastic about it, think that we can handle everything. Think that since I'm the leader, that's my position, that's my title, I don't need to study leadership. All I need to do is just have a title and then I'll figure it out from there because I'm special, I'm gifted, I was great in sales, I was this or that. So God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. As a leader, there are certain things, especially if you're in middle management, maybe you're a middle manager, why? Why would you go after another boss? Why not make him look good instead? And you're like, Jason, I can't handle that. And I've done a ton of episodes on that. Jocko Willink has a really good episode when you work for a boss, and we've done this, when you work for an asshole boss, and what you can do to change. And guess what? It starts with you first. It's taking 100% responsibility. The minute that you begin to do that is the minute that you can say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to mess with this. And that's what the rest of the prayer says. It says, to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can. What things can you change? Get your team together, have a meeting, outline your quarter, say, in this quarter, in this month, in this three months, in this year, what are the things that we can change that's going to make our clients better, going to make our work environment better, it's going to make each of you better. Let's get a list together of 10 things, and then we'll narrow them down to five, and then we're gonna narrow them down to three, and we're gonna focus on these three things for this quarter. Have your team help you find the things that you can change. Have them work with you to make that change. Every single one of you can be change agents. And then having courage. What does courage look like? Well, we don't see that now in leadership at all, do we? especially in the political arena, any of that, there is no courage. Everything is just polls, see where everybody's at, kind of see where things are going, and then I'll kind of make a decision. I don't want to offend anybody here or there or anywhere, so I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll try to go here. Maybe we'll do this. We'll promise you this, but not do anything. The courage to change. The courage to create change. Courage is something that is developed by you doing hard things over and over and over again. When you begin to make hard decisions and you begin to make these and you begin to flex that courage muscle, guess what's going to happen? It will be easy for you. And people will look at you as being courageous when in actuality, you're like, I have all the facts here. Here's the logic. Here's where everything's at, we're going and we're moving in this direction. And people be like, how is it so easy for you to make that decision? It's because I have practice. 
because I've been studying and doing and being a leader. So serenity, accept the things we cannot change, the courage, change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I love that. The wisdom to know the difference. Well, what's wisdom? I think this is a great definition of wisdom. Knowing the difference of where I need to be and where I don't need to be as a leader. Knowing the difference and understanding my ability and the gifts that my team has. And this is the direction that I'm going to go in that. And if I can't go in that direction, either I'll hire somebody or I'll get a team together to go in that direction or I'm just at this time not going to be able to do it. See, that's wisdom. What happens a lot of times is we get emotionally biased. And in that emotion, we agree to do things that we know seem to be impossible. And in that impossibility, yes, sometimes with a lot of hard work, grinning and bearing and moving through, paddling upstream, you can accomplish it. But sometimes you're going to set yourself up for failure by having an emotional bias. If someone asks you to do something, that's unique, it doesn't hurt to say, hey, let me get back with you tomorrow. I'm going to take 24 hours, I'm going to think it over, and I'm going to have an outline and a plan for you of what I think can be done and can't be done. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'll get, I'll get a couple people together, and we're going to have a meeting on it. And then I feel like I can remove all my emotions and biases out of it, and I can come to you with a, a plan that's logical. Would that be fine with you? Do you want me to make an emotional decision now based off of hunches or do you want me to come together and get, and some people say, take all the time you want. This is just an idea I was thinking about, Jason. This is where I was thinking about going. Didn't need an answer right away. Would love to be able to get a report or something like that. That would be awesome. Okay, good. Well, when do you need this by? Is this urgent? Do you want me to take the 24 hours and go through or, or do you want me to take some time and a uh, schedule a week from now or something like that, two weeks from now? You don't have to say yes. And this is this is where wisdom comes in. You don't have to agree and say yes all the time. Sometimes it's better to give yourself not an out, but to give yourself time. Because in that time, you can be self-aware enough. That's what this podcast is, self-aware leader. You can be self-aware enough where you can say, what biases do I have? First principles thinking, what biases do I have? How can I reduce this down to the simplest form? How can I remove to the point to where this is ridiculous? Remove all the obstacles, remove all the heat. Then another great one is, and this helps you being self-aware when you're looking at a situation where you need a lot of wisdom, is if I had unlimited resources, how would I do this? I love that one. It's a fun game. You should try it. If you, if you have a small business, say right now, I have unlimited money. What would I do right now? And then reverse engineer from there. Okay. I, I, I don't have unlimited money, but I do have $1,000. Well, what are some of the things that I wrote when I had unlimited money? What are some of the things that I can do? What are some of those things that I can do now? See, you get that? That I can do now with $1,000. Well, you know, I said this, this, and this with unlimited money, but if I kind of scale that back a little bit, I can still do this. Oh, I never thought about that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not really that expensive even though I thought it was. See, it gets the brain thinking, guys. That's what it's all about. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. What a great leadership quote, isn't it? And I encourage you, you can buy these on Amazon, these little cards. I have them everywhere on my refrigerator, in my mirror. I just, I, I just love to say this. For me, it's more of an affirmation. Um, because the thing that I want as a self-aware leader more than anything is wisdom. And I love courage and I love peace. Peace, courage, and wisdom. What a great leader. So I encourage you guys, get these little cards. They're awesome. Um, like I said, you can see them. They're on eBay, Amazon, everywhere. You can get like a pack of 500. Pass them out to people. If somebody gets offended over this, then psh, whatever. They can scratch out whatever they want, but I wouldn't have that person on my team anyways if they're that offended to every little thing. We need some flexibility in life, don't we? We should. If we're putting others first, then we would be respecting that person's beliefs, wouldn't we? 